Hi, I'm Roger Evenden. Thank you so much for watching the videos on this channel. Please support my work by linking, commenting, subscribing and sharing. You can learn more about Enterprise Architecture at my online academy. Details and a link are in the description text below this video. In this video, I'm going to look at applying the Pareto principle so that we can reuse generic architectures and gain benefits by using those generic architectures. There's a significant part of what we think of as an enterprise architecture that is actually shared. And I'll give you some examples to show you what I mean here. For example, a significant part of the architecture for all of the players in the same industry is common because they share that same industry background. They all operate within the same industry sector. So if we took three banks like Lloyds Banking Group, Barclays and HSBC, we would find that a lot of what they do internally within the enterprise is actually the sort of thing that any bank would do. It's common at the industry level. And so it's a shared understanding of the enterprise architecture that's true for all of those banks. We find a similar thing by all of the players in the same geography. So all of the people operating within the European borders share certain characteristics. This is even more noticeable when we're dealing with all of the people operating within a particular country where the language, the culture, the government are all the same. But even in broader geographic areas like Europe or the Americas or Africa, there are some characteristics which are shared across all of the players in that geographic region. So knowing the geographic regions, knowing the architecture that's prevalent in those geographic areas will help you to simplify your own personal architecture, but also make it easier to have that shared understanding. Now there are also a very large number of common systems and increasingly there are common systems that are shared by large groups of people. So everyone using the same common systems, the internet is obviously the biggest example here, but again, if we go back to our example of the financial service industry, a lot of players in that industry share the same infrastructure for processing transactions, processing payments. We can also find that anyone who has the same domain area that they're working in is going to share knowledge. So one example of this is accounting practice. Accounting practice is fairly similar worldwide and the people dealing with accounts, setting up accounts, using accounts, understanding accounts, all of those people share common domain knowledge. So again, there's a common architecture that would apply to accounting. Strategy planning would be another example where the basic processes, the basic elements used in strategy planning are common domain knowledge. And so you find there are domain specific architectures that cover areas like business planning and strategy planning. Now, we can save a lot of time and effort if we leverage and reuse these generic architectures. So you can think of generic architectures as being on a continuum. Now, a continuum is something that ranges across a big spectrum. And in this case, the range goes from architectures that are more generic to architectures that are more specific. And that is quite a broad spectrum. And a key thing that we can do within that spectrum is that we can extract elements from specific architectures and create them in a format that allows them to be more generic, that allows them to have future reuse. They've been generalized so that they can apply in multiple situations. So we could take out the key elements that are banking and take them out of individual enterprises like HSBC or Lloyd's Banking Group, take them out of that and 
make them more generic as generic industry architectures and those industry architectures can then be adapted for use in specific contexts. So we take a generic industry architecture for banking and now we apply it specifically in Barclays. Now this notion of a continuum is very important and you'll find that it's mentioned in things like the open group architecture framework that refers to an enterprise, an architecture and a solution continuum. The key question here is, how do you find suitable generic architectures? How do you find ones that can easily and quickly be adapted to meet your specific architecture needs? Because if there's a generic architecture and you can't do that easy and quick adaptation and adoption, then you're going to be using almost as much time trying to use a generic architecture as you would creating your own specific architecture from scratch. Now, if we look at that continuum, the idea of a continuum is that it is a gradual change from generic to specific, but we can see that there are specific points along that continuum. So we could say there are different types of architecture that populate different parts of that continuum. Some of them are more generic, some of them are more specific. And here's an architecture hierarchy that I use with my clients, and it ranges from foundation architectures, foundation being the very, very generic principles, protocols, patterns that are repeated across every enterprise architecture. So for example, the eight fundamental factors that form the meta framework for many enterprise architecture programs those eight factors are part of the foundation architecture. They're foundational principles that apply in every situation. Then I've got cultural or geographic architectures. What I mean by that is here are architectures that reflect the language, the politics, the culture of a particular geographic area. These could be regional or country, based architectures. Then we come to common systems architectures. A common system architecture could be something like a faster payments architecture in the banking industry, or it could be the common system that is the internet. Then we come to domain specific architectures. A domain specific architecture might be architectural elements that are true for all accounting practices or another example of a domain specific architecture could be common elements that are true for all process architectures. Then we come to industry architectures and this industry architectures could be for any of the key industries for healthcare for example or for telecommunications or for banking and finance or for logistics and transportation. And then we come to architectures that are enterprise specific. Now there could be additional points on this. If you are a company that operates across multiple industry sectors, then between domain specific and industry architectures, you may want to have cross industry architectures, the architectural elements that allow you to easily operate between those different industry sectors. And it's also important to show that this continuum continues. In another lecture, I'm going to talk about what happens internally within an enterprise as we continue down that continuum. Thank you for watching this video. Please remember to link, comment, subscribe and share and I look forward to seeing you again on this channel or at my online Enterprise Architecture Teaching Academy. Thank you.